Welcome to Das Geek. I am super excited to share this. What you're seeing is Rocket League on the new Ryzen 3 budget build that I did. So I wanted to show you some of the performance of this machine before we get into the building of this machine, which is equally as fun and awesome. So you're going to get to see the machine built from the ground up. So if you've never built a PC before, watch all 27 minutes of it and enjoy. If you have, though, maybe you want to skip to the end. So that's why I put the performance stuff here up front. So this is Rocket League in 1920 by 1080 and also an ultra wide screen because I have the ultra wide screen hooked up to show the resolution. 1920 by 1080 runs in the high 60s, low 70s on the high settings for Rocket League. And once we go to ultra right, uh, wide, it runs around the 60, low 60 frames per second. So with the Radeon 4 gigabyte 560 in there, the Ryzen 1200 does an amazing job. This is while running OBS, of course, in the background. And I didn't tweak OBS a ton uh, to do indistinguishable quality or anything because I wasn't trying to impress with the quality of the video. Obviously, it looks gorgeous. I just wanted to show you the frames that you get on the highest settings there. Also, I downloaded the Pharonix benchmarking tests, and so I have those. You'll be able to see those here in a second and show some of the frame rates that you can get. This is the machine that we've built with the Pony 120, the Ryzen, and here are some of the results at 2560 by 1080, the ultra-wide setting. You can see we range anywhere from 130 to 400 frames per second. These are some of, the, again, the open-source games that you can run with the Pharonix benchmarking test. And I also have some footage of that that I'll share with you as well, but really impressive for such a budget build. I mean, if you think about it, this machine cost me about $400-ish and brand new, if I didn't have some of the used parts, it would have been about 500 bucks, which is about the price of a PS4. But this is a lot more powerful, I think, than a PS4. You're going to be able to do a lot more with it than just game, which makes this so incredible. It runs super snappy. I put uh, Zubuntu on here because I'm a lover of the XFCE desktop right now. And so the, all these benchmarks were done with Zubuntu. And it just really has uh, proven to me how amazing the Ryzen is. Even at their lowest end CPU, it can really... Do everything I've needed it to do from gaming to being able to encode to being able to record and it's gonna make a perfect stream machine for me for any of the TF2 Rocket League or maybe even some CSGO coming up here so the next screens you're gonna see this is some flashing of the Phronix test while it's running you can go on Phronix website and download this test to do some benchmarks yourself but it basically throws the frames at the screen faster than uh, the screen can even flip to capture you know the ranges of the frames per second and also the millisecond reaction time uh, that it captures with its tests and it will give you a ton of information on its readout i just grabbed some of the fps stuff because that's what i was looking for there but overall very happy with this build we're at 3,000 plus subscribers now. We finally crossed that 3,000 mark, and I'm so excited about that. What a great video to celebrate that. Thank you for all your continued support, and I hope you guys enjoy the building of the Ryzen 3 machine. So until next time, get out there and build your own machine. Build your own PC. Build your own beast, and make sure that you've risen and fill your brains. We are doing the Ryzen build finally. And yes, it's not the Ryzen 6 like we wanted, but this will be a really interesting test to see if one of their lower end CPUs here and a very, very cost efficient build is capable of doing things like, say, being a streaming PC, being my encoder for my main computer. Also, I just can't wait to see the compatibility with the Ryzen and I think we're gonna go with Manjaro XFCE for this so we're gonna have a lot of fun we're gonna build this I will tell you ahead of time building a PC is a lot of fun it's definitely something you should do I have other videos where I've spent more time building all these parts here are extremely cost-effective parts so everything here was meant to be as cheap as humanly possible is the only way to convince the wife that I needed yet like a seventh or eighth I don't know what I'm up to now computer and it had to be a Ryzen build so in any case let's get to building this we've got this case here it's a solo t1 
dash R. Never heard of it before, but it cost like 20 bucks, so I couldn't pass it up. And the edges are at least rolled on this. So if you built PCs back in the day, it used to be a complete hazard and you'd get cuts all over the place. The, the actual covers have some pretty sharp edges, but at least the inside of the case so far, they've rolled the edges, making it a little more difficult for you to get cut, which is nice. So I appreciate that for such an inexpensive case. You really can't beat it and it actually had really good reviews for being an inexpensive case with good airflow and that's primarily what you're looking for in a case now i do not do uh cord tucking techniques it is an art form i love looking at people's builds who spend hours and hours tucking away cords and all of that uh, i do make sure that the cords stay out of the way of fans and uh, make sure that it just doesn't look sloppy but I don't spend all my time focusing on hiding it there are a couple reasons for that number one I'm always upgrading my computers and PCs and snipping 15 zip ties after I've done a build is quite annoying and tedious and if you ever need to get a part to replace it that can also be tedious to get those cords out and unwrapped so for me it's about efficiency as well as looks and that's what I go for and that's not to take away from anybody who takes the time to do that art form because it's very cool the way that you can hide cords and things but that's not what I do so if you like that type of stuff I'm sure there are many channels out there to show you how to wrap cords we're gonna do this build from start to finish and that's because I figured some people who may not have built their PC before might want to see this and so let's get started so the only thing I've done here is uh, these cords were tied together like this inside the case. I pulled though the two covers off and I pulled both covers off so that I can put some cords behind uh, when I am putting things in. We're gonna put a power supply in and then we are gonna put the motherboard and we should be good to go. For a power supply, you might recognize this from a build I did with a mini ITX, but this is the Corsair CX430. So all I've done here is place the power supply inside the case now this is not modular meaning i cannot remove any of the cords that comes with this and that's just a cost saving feature when you buy this and i haven't mounted it yet but the key thing here is just that you'll, you'll notice there's a big gap in the back of the case and that's obviously where your power supply is going to go it's the only other thing that would fit there in the power supply and i'm going to show you that gap here on the back So you can see there's only one giant gap in this case. Well, there's two. Here's where the motherboard goes, which is long and rectangular, and your power supply is obviously gonna go where this big giant hole is here. And you're just gonna line up those holes and screw it into place. Now, if you have a modular one, these cords may come off or they might not even be attached, but it's pretty idiot proof to plug in the cords that you're gonna need. And we'll go through that when we get there to the motherboard. Now you could put the motherboard first and then put the power supply, but because this power supply is so heavy and has all these cords attached to it, they're gonna knock into everything. To me, it's better to get the power supply in, then lay the motherboard in so we don't have to worry about damaging anything. Your case, if it's bought brand new, will come with a bunch of screws that you can utilize. So I have all the screws laid out here and you're gonna look for some big fat screws for your power supply. And so we've got four Phillips fat screws. And again, if you use the wrong screws, it just won't be secure and you'll know because it will move around, not be secure, it won't go into place. Using the wrong screws may make your friends make fun of you a little bit, but otherwise it's not gonna cause any damage as long as it's secure so you should feel it tighten and you should feel the power supply stop moving once you have all the screws in place because you do not want this falling over inside of your case once you set it up now some cases have ventilation here at the top this one does not so if I had the fan facing the other way it would simply be blowing in its side of itself and there's no real airflow happening that's why in this case we are mounting it like this so that the airflow can actually has a place to escape to. And other fans will then take that and get that out of the case, get that hot air out of the case and help us keep moving. I don't suspect this is gonna generate a lot of heat with the setup that we have. So I'm not uh, thinking we're gonna have too many issues there, but I do have a laser thermometer so we can check the temperature inside 
once we get this build done, we can add additional fans or even cut our own holes in this case to make it more uh, airflow efficient if we want to. And here's a look at the box for the B350. So it's an AMD socket AM4. Obviously has Ryzen support, HDMI, safe slot core, surge protected networking, over voltage protection, stable power supply, stainless steel back IO, and eSports champion. So you're gonna be an eSports champion the second you get this board, which is amazing. And you can see all the features here, VGA, DVI ports, HDMI ports, USB 3, USB 3.1, LAN, audio, PCI Express 3.0, 2.0 slot, Azus Safe Slot Core Support, LED Illuminated Design, Audio Shielding, PCB Layers, Capacitors, 2x Front USB 3.0, 6x SATA, AMD 350, M2 Support, which I thought was really cool for such an inexpensive motherboard, AMD AM4 Socket, DDR4 Support, and Digia VRM and EPU. So, got all the features that I needed, but the one thing we want out of this motherboard is this plate here. Now, let's say you bought a used motherboard and it didn't come with the plate. You could still install the motherboard without the plate, but it's just not going to look as nice and you're going to get a lot more dust and things inside. So, uh, the plate's a nice little thing to have, but I've definitely installed uh, many computers without the plates. And that snapping sound for that back plate is what you want to hear. And now this is what it looks like once that is snapped into place. Well, that's what we wanted was that snapping sound. Once you hear that clicking sound, you start from one corner and you pop it in, and then you go to the other corner from behind. Again, the edges that are popping through here should be on the back side of the motherboard, not out the front. So now when we do our alignment with our motherboard, to make sure that our posts are correctly set up, those little golden posts in there that were pre-installed in this case, we want to make sure we don't scratch anything as we put our motherboard in. So we will kind of want to gently go down and underneath some of the barriers we have here and then line this up. So I can see we have about four of our posts lining up here, which is about perfect. Again, because I'm not putting a lot in, some of the strenuous areas on the machine are going to be here because you're gonna be pushing in a graphics card, and here because you're gonna be pushing in your RAM. So you wanna make sure it has plenty of support in those places. And again, you don't want to shove anything hard into a computer when you're plugging it in. It should go in nice and easy and come out nice and easy. If it's not coming out, there's probably a latch. If it's not going in, there's probably something in the way. So keep that in mind. But this will work perfect for us. And here we're just going to use these tiny Phillips screwdriver screws here that have the little hood surrounding the Phillips head. And again, just enough to feel it tighten. Do not over tighten this at all. It does not need a lot of pressure. If you're putting a lot of pressure, you're doing it wrong. It should just be very, as soon as you feel it tighten, stop, you're done. Now you could add some additional posts if you want to. Add some additional security or you don't feel it's secure, you just take the motherboard out and screw those posts into the case and you'd have some additional support there. But I think we've got plenty of support on this motherboard and we'll be fine. So now we gotta start thinking about our power supply wires. Don't let this intimidate you. Everything nowadays is pretty plug and play and simple, but we want our wires to not be all over the place. So we've got to figure out what's going to be going where. So this obviously is going to plug here and I've got 
lots of extra slack here. So I want to try to figure out a clever way of getting my cable over there without actually interrupting things. Now, one way would be to kind of go underneath the motherboard, come back, and plug it over here, but that's going to block all of these SATA ports here, so we don't want to do that. I'm bringing this from behind here, I think that will work out just perfect for us. What I'm going to do is just give this motherboard a little support as that clicks into place. just so I don't bend anything too much. So now we've got that power cord connected. It's a little bit out of the way. Not as good as most people or some people might do, but good enough for government work. You get all of these wires unwrapped here. So the next thing we've got is all of these power buttons and switches and everything. Now why do I want to do deal with these right now? Because I want to power this up and make sure we're going to get power without having every single thing installed and in place and wired correctly we want to make sure we're going to get the appropriate power to this i'm going to start with these wires these wires will be connected to the case they're connected to the power buttons the extra usb ports you use all of that is here and they're very well labeled and sim simple to understand where they'll go now what's interesting is i noticed that all of the connections that i'm going to need are over on this side of the motherboard and all these cords are on this side so this is a perfect opportunity just to run these underneath the case and then have them come up and connect here and you can see there's a little hole right there where we could run these so i just want to make sure that's where all of the buttons are before i go and run them all and it looks like that's the case I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. So you can see on the back side of this, I'm pulling these wires through. And then the actual connections are down here. So now I'm going to bring them out the other side here. Now when I lay this back down, you'll be able to see all the wires that we just pulled through here. Kind of poorly designed and why the plus and minus on the power weren't just connected into one single adapter, had to be two super tiny ones, is beyond me. I'm sure there's a reason, but I don't know why. So we've got all of those done. So now we have the HD, LED, and reset button. Hard drive LED is going to be at the top here. Now we have an additional 12 volt power that we need for our CPU, which should be labeled CPU. We can use some tie downs here. There are some tie down points if we want to run alongside the motherboard and then simply connect there. So it'll be a good opportunity for some tie downs to keep that nice and tucked in. I'll show you that. So we just ran the extra power here. It's the only place it can go. It's labeled for the 12 volt power. You'll have an extra CPU power for your motherboard. And we ran it alongside the power supply down below here where we can zip tie it. We couldn't go through the other side because the hole in this case was too small. Here is the Ryzen we have indeed risen there's the cpu itself i've never done one of these installs here mostly been doing a lot of intels and there is a slight difference in how they work the first thing i want to know is how this fan works so looking at this fan here in particular that comes with the cpu which is a really nice fan by the way to come with the cpu i've already touched like an idiot the bottom and that's your thermal paste there and we don't want to get that all over ourselves so we got to be careful with that i wish they put a sticker or something over that generally they do and you pull the sticker off first and here we have our cpu and a nice ryzen sticker so the problem that i see right now is this particular type of fan versus the motherboard's pre-mounted brackets 
If you notice, this has screws that kind of go down into the case there, go down into the motherboard. And this already has brackets there with screws. So this is meant for one that you would click down on, but the CPU fan that comes with it is a screw down. So we have to remove these posts here. The main thing with a motherboard is not to scratch it. So you wanna to try to lift things up and out, not across. Now they've become a lot more resilient over the years, thankfully. Again, when you're lifting things, lift up and do not drag things across. So that's our little bracket. We want to keep that in case we ever resell this. We'll put it in the box. So now we can mount our CPU into the screw holes here. Once or our fan, once we get our CPU mounted. So let's take our beautiful CPU out here. Can we take a moment and just enjoy that? PC Master Race. All right, here we go. Let's take this beautiful, gorgeous CPU by AMD out. Now, all CPUs are universal this way. There's a little arrow right there. That tells you how to put the CPU in. The arrow is extremely important. Down here, there is going to be a marker. Once we lift this lever up, so you kind of do a click, so you kind of move it out to the left a little bit and just raise up and you'll see these pinholes get revealed when you do that. Now, we want to match this arrow with the indicator arrow that's on this motherboard, the CPU socket, AM4 socket here. So there is this tiny little arrow here and I'm not gonna be able to, let me try to bring it up and show you. And there's this tiny little arrow right here, it kinda of juts out. And that's different from anything on any of the other corners. Telling me that's likely the point. Although I don't know why it's so cryptic compared to other motherboards I've used here. So let me look at the manual and just see here. Now this is what they show in the manual. And you can see they show the indicator arrow on the actual CPU which we can easily see here and we can see it's on the opposite side of the actual latch so it would be like here which is where I see that little arrow pointing to so um, that should be correct it's just a little more cryptic than a lot of motherboards that I've seen the Zeus could do better in making that a little more clear making that actual portion a little white paint on it or putting a little paint on the motherboard, lettering to show you that that's where it goes. So we're gonna lift this tab up, and this is where damage happens constantly. You just wanna gently rest this in there. It should rest perfectly if you have that arrow aligned right. And it does, it just sinks right into those little holes. Now, we can close it up. If you start closing and you feel any pressure at all, or hear a little crinkling sound, you've got it lined up wrong. And you definitely want to take it slow. Don't go even as fast as I did there. Take it slow. The reason we're mounting like this is we don't want, you can see the RAM running along here. This edge will hit into that RAM. Now, I'd like to have it turned the other way, but the screw holes won't align that way. Now we're just going to do a diagonal tightening here. As 
soon as you feel a little tension, stop. Do not tighten any further. There we go. Now our fan's in place and we should be able to put our RAM in. We need our RAM DDR4. 2,666 megahertz on this. So now we're going to install this in slot one. And RAM. We're going to pull back on one of the tabs. Won't move. It will be static. And the tab on the other side will collapse down. You want to push that down gently. And then you just want to line up. You'll see there's this little slot in the middle of the RAM and you want to line that up with the slot that's here. So you know you have your RAM positioned if that lines up. If it doesn't line up, just switch it around and slowly lower your RAM in. And you should feel it click in nice and easy just like that. Alright, we've had to make some modifications. Apparently this CPU does not have an integrated GPU in it or this motherboard cannot run it with the Ryzen 3 so maybe some of the other CPUs allow it so we've gotten the Radeon RX 560 with 4 gigabytes of RAM and we are now up and running so to install that all we did is simply put that video card into the PCI Express slot and we gave it some extra power here. We've got to do some work with the quartz and everything. We've got a hard drive uh, off to the side and that was to make sure I got a heartbeat. And here's a view of our system posting. So we know we have a solid working machine. Our motherboard temperature looks good there. We've got our fan profile built in. So now we're ready to finish up the wiring, install the hard drive with some screws and just kind of button it up and put the covers back on and start using the machine.